Good morning. It's December 2nd, and hopefully you guys can hear this because I have to be a little bit quiet. Everybody's sleeping. Um, November 30th, I went to U of M, and we had some updates for Amethyst. I tried to record this video five times that day, or the next day, and it didn't work. Actually, it was November 30th I tried to record. November 29th is when we went in. Not that it matters. Um, we saw MFM and they did another ultrasound and they gave us a little bit of good news and then a lot of the same news. So the little bit of good news is that <clears throat> um, she, Amethyst's umbilical arteries, there's two of them. One of them has the cease flow in between her heartbeats, meaning that there's no forward motion um, in between those beats of her heart. But the other one is actually normal and is working just fine. Sorry, I'm a little scratchy this morning. Um, so she is continually getting forward flow, just only from one artery rather than two. And then we spoke to a genetic counselor next, and that person, that woman, said that she wanted to do some testing because it looks like Patrick and I's family don't have any history of any genetic disorders, which is true. And, you know, we went over all of our history and stuff. There's just nothing there, really. Um, so <clears throat> we did a blood draw on me. I should have the results next week sometime. And that's looking for fetal cells in my blood that would detect different disorders. They said that they're not concerned with it being Down syndrome, which I kind of figured anyway. Um, they're slightly concerned, but can't, uh, like, she doesn't think that that's what it is, but they can't take it off the list because it affects multiple organs. Um, trisomy 13 and 18, which would be really bad because that's basically a death sentence for most babies that end up with that. Um, and then the other one, and the one that everyone keeps mentioning to us, is called DeGeorge syndrome. I don't know if that's what it is, but if it is, then it looks pretty mild and uh, it does have like some slight cognitive and uh, speech and um, fine motor skill delays or gross motor skills as well, I guess. Um, but the major thing is that it's connected to the heart defect that we have seen in Amethyst. So that's the reason that they're looking at that one. Um <clears throat> if my blood work does come back and doesn't say anything either way, then when she's born, they'll test her blood then. After we spoke to the genetic counselor, we went to um, cardiology and they did a lot of extensive imaging of her heart. And while they were doing that, um, excuse me, they said that yes, she does have the defect that we found here in Kalamazoo, but the prognosis is a lot different, like what they expected versus what Kalamazoo expects. So what they said is that they need the baby to be strong enough to do the surgery, but not necessarily big enough. So regardless of what size she is when she's born, they're going to give her prostaglandulins, which will keep the ductus arteriosus open. And that is what is giving her all of her blood to her lower part of her body since the aorta is interrupted. Um, and then because she has the hole in the bottom of her heart and once her lungs start filling with air instead of fluid, <clears throat> the resistance will go down there. So then the blood will probably go more toward her lungs than toward her um, lower body. And so she will probably have to have oxygen for a while um, while she's on that medication. So um, they can give her that medication for weeks, which is fantastic news because if she is born really small because of the growth restriction and because she has to be born early or whatever, um, the hope and what they're saying at U of M is that she'll just go on this medication until she's big enough to have the heart surgery or not necessarily big enough, but strong enough to have the heart surgery. Then 
at the point that she's able to have the surgery, they'll do um, they'll do two, two surgeries. The first one is going to put a little shunt in her ductus arteriosus so that she no longer has to have the medication to keep that open, but that that little shunt will keep it open. But then again, because of the blood flow changes in her body, uh, they want to make sure that not too much of her blood is going to her lungs. So they're going to wrap little rubber bands around the pulmonary arteries that go into the lungs to kind of keep that resistance a little bit higher. That way, the blood that's in her heart, the bottom part, um, when the resistance goes away, it's not just flowing up and going into her um, her lungs, but instead on the other side, instead of crossing over, it's gonna go up into her aorta as well. So that's the plan. They're going to do those two things and that they can do. They open her chest to do that surgery, but they don't have to open her heart to do that surgery. So um, one of them is through a catheter into the vein and the other one is purely on the outside of the heart anyway. So after she recovers from that surgery, they said she'd be able to come home for a while. And then between four and six months old is when she would have her next surgery. And that one is an open heart surgery where they would repair the hole at the bottom of her heart. And then they would also take those bands off and um, correct the aorta to make that arch complete instead of interrupted the way that it is currently. Um, they said that if babies are strong enough to do the surgery and don't have any other issues like that would be life-threatening anyway, um, then the success rate is like 95%. So, I mean, there's still a bit of risk, but 95% is pretty high compared to zero if she doesn't have it. So I feel like out of all of the information that I got from all of this, the main point that we walked away with is there's hope. When Kalamazoo was telling me that we we're possibly just going to be bringing home a dead baby or I mean, not, not bringing her home, but having a dead baby or having a baby that could not survive, could not have heart surgery, could not do any of these things. And then I go to U of M and they're like, oh, and if your baby is breathing all right, you get to hold her for an hour or two before we take her and start giving her these medications in the cardiac intensive care unit. And I just bawled because I'm, I was hoping that I would get to hold her at least for a minute, but they told me an hour and <clears throat> I could cry again. I was so, so happy and so relieved that it was still a really big deal that she has to have surgery and Patrick's still really concerned about that. And we're still concerned about like, what is the genetic thing that's causing this, if that's what it is. But I just believe that God is big and he is faithful and whatever um, is happening, he's got it and he's taking care of it. And whether it's that God heals the issue or whether he uses this testimony and this example or this story or whatever um, to help other people, it's just going to be big and he's going to be glorified. And I wanted you guys to know that I love and appreciate all of your prayers. And I'm hoping to give you even more, more and better updates soon. But last little bit of information, cardiology said that I don't need to see them again until after she's born. So no more appointments with cardiology. Next up is just lots and lots of checks on how she's growing to make sure that she is continuing to grow. And right now, She's getting eight out of eight on all of her pop quiz for baby, which is basically like looking for her to do normally thing, normal things that babies in the uterus do, moving, practice breaths, you know, all of that stuff. And she's doing all of that and she looks amazing. She just looks tiny. So thanks again for all of your prayers. Hopefully this video will load and you'll be able to see it. Have a great day.